Yvonne Chouinard is a very successful businessman who detests business. He owns the sportswear giant Patagonia, which he describes as my resource to do something good. He believes, he says, that the accepted model of capitalism that necessitates endless growth and deserves the blame for the destruction of nature must be replaced. The success of Patagonia leaves him free to travel the world, speaking to environmental causes and challenging business to reinvent itself. I, I, was, I was always a craftsman. My father was a craftsman. My father was born in, in Quebec, started working at 12 years old, uh, walked over the border into Maine and started working in a mill at, t at 10 years old, actually, 10 years old. And, uh, but he became a tradesman and could build an entire house by himself. So I kind of inherited those genes, I think. And so I'm, a, I'm an innovator, not an inventor. But I look at products, whether it's a tablespoon or whatever it is, and I can say, that thing's ugly. I could make a better one of those. And so when I was young, I was a mountain climber. And I looked at all the tools for mountain climbing, and they were all really rough and didn't work very well and they were made real cheaply and so I thought I can do better than this. That's how I started out in business. But you came to believe that business was really the source of the major environmental problems, right? That, that, that we needed to, well, capitalism in any case needed to be up, upended and uh, replaced. Right? Yeah, eventually, yeah, I saw that as, uh, I mean, I, 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 I've had several uh, times in my life when I woke up and I realized I was part of the problem and that I should do something about that so that I was part of, became part of the solution rather than the problem. You started out making products that people relied on for their lives and that's got to have something to do with your you know, firm insistence that quality is, the, is at the top of your list of priorities. Right? Yeah, you know, I, I think a lot of the problems that we're having as a society, as being an unsustainable society, I think can be solved through quality. Uh, when you're talking about employing people, technology is not going to employ people. It's going to destroy jobs. The more technology we have, the more robots we have, whatever it is, automated machines, it puts people out of work. And uh, doesn't necessarily make the best product. And take agriculture, for instance. You know, this industrial agriculture is feeding more people in the short term, but in the long term, it's destroying millions of acres of cropland, it's polluting our planet, it's, uh, it's giving us food that is not as nutritious. And I think the solution in a lot of cases is what David Brower says, turn around and take a forward step. In other words, go back to labor-intensive organic agriculture, which employs people in meaningful work. I mean, I, I would much rather be picking fruit in an orchard than working at a computer all day myself. Whenever, whenever I'm stuck with a business problem, the answer is always quality. Increase the quality. As opposed to a lot of businesses say, oh, our profits are down this year. Decrease the quality. If we want to employ people in the world, uh, we have to consume less, but consume better. In other words, make products that last a long time. They're multifunctional. One little part breaks down, you can repair it instead of throw the whole piece away. We had a house built recently out of all recycled materials. We built it out of uh, broken up sidewalks, actually. 28 inch thick walls. I never have to heat it, never have to cool it. It's like living in a cave. It's sort of ambient temperature that's comfortable. And it's built the last 200 years. And it costs more to build it, but it won't, you know, you won't have to tear it down in 50 years and build another one and then another one. Yeah, yeah. And there's no real reason that it shouldn't last more than 200 years either if people, you know, if, if uh, people maintain it as the years go by. Right? Yeah, I mean, look at, look at the old brewery over here where we have our Patagonia store. It's that thing was built, what, 18th century. So it's still standing, built out of rock, and, and uh, that's fantastic, I think. No reason you can't keep on forever. 
You, you, you talk about Patagonia at one point, you say that, that you think of Patagonia as an ecosystem with its, with its uh, vendors and customers as an integral part of that system. That's a very different vision of, of a corporate structure. Right? But tell me how that, how that works. Well, uh, I mean, I can say that our customers are very important to us because we do very little advertising and so we rely on word of mouth from one customer telling another person about Patagonia. You know, on advertising we spend one half of one percent of sales on advertising, that's all. What we're trying to do as a, as a company is cause the least amount of harm in running a business. And in doing so, we want to influence other companies. So our, our mission statement is, you know, make the best product. So there, there's the quality part of it. Cause the least amount of harm. And that's the unintended consequences. To, in other words, educate ourselves so that we know what we're doing. And so not, we're not causing harm unintentionally or just through ignorance. And the last part is to use business to inspire and implement solutions to the environmental crisis. Yvonne Chouinard, the extraordinary owner of the Patagonia Sportswear Company, who sees his business as a tool with which to serve the environment. If you enjoyed this conversation, you may also want to see our interview with Andrew Heinzman, who heads Canada's first environmentally oriented investment company, or James Hogan, who uses his public relations expertise to unmask the spin doctors of climate change denial. For The Green Interview, I'm Silver Donald Cameron. See you next time.